Mga atit, mga kuya, welcome again to Kuya Puto's channel. How is everybody out there in YouTube world? So lately guys, si Kuya Puto, I keep on watching uh, all of these clips sa YouTube and the internet overall. And every now and then, you know, nakakakita po ako ng interesting topic. So yesterday, meron po akong napanood. Uh, it's about uh, Kabayan. 16 years na po siya dito sa Canada. And uh, homeless po siya sa BC. Unfortunately, you know, it happens. Uh, dito po sa Canada, just like anywhere else uh, sa buong mundo, meron pong mga hindi pinalad na nagiging homeless. And it's unfortunate, you know, combination po kasi yun ng physical, tsaka mental, tsaka financial, di ba? Dali yung mga tao, iba-iba sitwasyon. And unfortunately, you know, nadali po sila nun. All of us sa atin, biglang gumukulat. Eh. Baga, isang bigla lang. Ikaw alam ko na nang nangyayari. Baga, nasaktin ako eh. Halos anim na buwan ng homeless o walang tirahan ng kababayan na itatago natin sa pangalang Mario. 16 years na sa Canada ang permanent resident na humiling na itago ang pagkakakilanlan. Hiwalay kasi sa asawa at mga anak. So, sa case po ni Kuya, sabi niya, nag-umpisa po lahat dahil bumili siya ng kotse ng mahal because yung binili niya ng kotse, I guess, uh, did not have his... Uh, yung dealer na binili niya ng kotse did not have his best interest in mind. You know? Alam ko po medyo mababaw kung pakikinggan ninyo naging homeless ako dahil bumili ko ng kotse. But you know what? We're not here to judge. You know, I just wanted to show everybody out there in YouTube land, lahat ng mga kababayan natin, kahit nung nandito na kayo sa Canada, you know, everybody is uh, subject or susceptible to bad times. And nasa sa inyo na po yun kung paano nyo itatako yung problema ninyo. You know, dahil marami po siguro magsasabi, oh, bumili ka lang ng kotse tapos naging homeless ka na. No, we're not here to judge po. You know, hindi po natin alam kung ano yung mga problema ng mga tao. Baka mamaya, mas malalim pa doon kaya nagkaganon yung buhay ni Kuya, di ba? So, yung pong mga homeless dito sa Canada, you know, they've done many studies. Okay? Because this is an ongoing problem. And they always say, like I said, it's a combination of financial, physical, and mental. You know, yung pong mga ibang tao, you know, unfortunately, you know, stuff happens in their lives, stuff happens in their families, you know, mga may problema sigurong nangyari and they couldn't uh, handle it and they just give up. You know, sometimes po yung mga tao, you know, they end up with a physical disability and they cannot work. You know, and then they fall into hard times to the point where wala na pong tumulong sa kanila and they have no choice but to become homeless. And, you know, sometimes din po, it's financial. Dahil napakataas po talaga ng cost of living dito sa Canada. And some people, they just give up unfortunately and, you know, they end up becoming homeless. Pero they say from the studies that they've made, ang pinaka cause ng homelessness is mental. Dahil marami pong nalululong sa droga. I hate drugs. Sabi nga po nung uh, Uncle Duterte ko. <laughs> uh, joking aside, uh, yeah, marami pong nalululong sa, sa bisyo. You know, hindi lang droga. You know, alcohol is number one. Okay? Well, not number one, but it's one of them. Uh, Hard drugs is another one of them. Dahil, you know, when you reach a point where talagang feel ng tao hopeless na talaga, you know, they do certain things para, you know, manum. Hindi ko po alam Tagalog nung num, but uh, yung manum yung feelings nila, parang, uh, somebody help me. Ano ba, ano ba Tagalog ng num? N-U-M-B. You know, parang di na nilang maramdaman yung sakit ng buhay, di ba? So, you know, they turn to drugs, alcohol, and other activities na hindi maganda. So, okay, let's talk about Kuya. So, sabi nila, si Kuya daw po, 16 years na PR sa Canada. And, you know, dati po maganda yung trabaho niya. Tapos, uh, 
nakakabayad pa rin po sila. You know, meron po siyang asawa, meron po siyang anak. So, 16 years sa Canada, napakatagal na po nun. So, you know, I was hoping na at least he got himself familiarized with how the system works, di ba? Dahil, you know, being here for that long, dapat po at least natuto na po kayo ng mga bagay-bagay na kailangan nyong gawin kung, you know, magka, magka problema, katulad ng financial, di ba? So, sabi niya dati, nakakapagtrabaho pa raw po siya. You know, nakakap- nakakapagbayad pa rin ng bills. And all of a sudden, bumili siya ng kotse, tapos, nung nangyari yun, nagkawatak-watak ang buhay niya. Pati yung asawa niya at yung mga anak niya, iniwanan siya. Nakakaraos naman daw noon kahit bad credit na dahil sa mga naunang utang ng pamilya. Pero nabago raw ang lahat ng alukan siyang bumili ng sasakyan. Nakaproba niya kasi ako eh. Nagawa niya ng paraan. Hindi ko na-expect at the same time. Yung mga, uh, naisip ko noon, may magagamit ako sa sasakya para sa mga anak ko. Uh, Magkano daw ang babayaran mo noon? Hininga ka ba ng down payment? Magkano daw? Wala, ang... wala po ako nilang nasa sasakya yun. Hininga, walang down payment. Wala ako nilabas na piso. O, sing, wala ako nilabas. Sinagot niya lahat, pati sa, sa insurance, sa, sa plaka, lahat, everything. Kaya siguro ako nakumbinsin niya. Pirma na ako ng pirma. Hindi ko na alam na yung ginagawa ko. Tatay, ano? Ano? So sabi po ni Kuya Mario uh, Nagumpisa po yung problema niya Nung binili niya yung kotse niya from the dealer Sabi niya Yung dealer po Did everything in his power Whether legitimately or illegitimately To make the deal happen And you know they gave, He gave him a payment And then yun Ito na nagumpisa So Yung pong Hindi ko po masyadong naiintindihan yun Dahil Si Kuya po, he's been here 16 years. So, at least dapat po natuto na po siya like how to make purchases and how to, you know, take care of your finances. Dahil, you know, how did you survive in Canada for 16 years and then maloloko pa rin po kayo ng mga salespeople? You know? Dahil, I don't know, to me po, I'm not blaming Kuya because like I said, everybody has different experiences, right? Ako po, natututo po ako from all of the mistakes that I've made. And I make sure that I don't make the same mistake twice, diba? And tama po yung sabi nila dito sa Canada, you know, marami pong magbebenta sa inyo. Marami pong mag offer sa inyo. And most of the time, they don't have your best interest at heart because isipin nyo guys kung meron kayong bibilin di ba you're buying it from a business and that business needs to create revenue and who do you think they get their revenue from sayo so there's a lot of shady people out there and it's gonna be up to you to do your due diligence para matuto and at the same time di kayo maloko ako po guys gumawa po ako ng four video series about buying a car dito sa Canada. Kung di nyo po gustong mabudol, panoorin nyo yun. Instead, baka kayo pa mang budol ng dealer. Dahil napakarami po talagang offers. Tama yung sabi nila. You know, whether it's for credit cards, for loans, you know, for cars, for houses, you know, for everything po. People are gonna sell you everything. That's just how it is, diba? That's how the economy works. Pero, Kailangan po mag-research kayo. Kailangan po magtanong-tanong kayo. Dapat po, you have to expand your knowledge. Especially, you know, being in Canada for 16 years. You know, ano po natutunan ninyo in 16 years? Na hanggang ngayon, naloloko pa rin po kayo. Dahil, you know, kung bibigyan kayo ng payment, ng dealership, you know, ikumpara niyo din sa sweldo niyo. It's very simple math, di ba? If it does not fit the budget, you don't take it on. It's as simple as that. So, hindi ko po talaga maintindihan kung ano naisip ni Kuya at the beginning to take on such a payment that he couldn't afford to the point where it drove him to become homeless and lose his family at the same time. It's really unfortunate. I'll give you an example, guys. Dati nung bata ako, okay, gusto kong bumili ng malaking TV. First time I moved out into my uh, first apartment, you know, bumukod ako mag So, pumunta ako sa Future Shop and sabi nila, uh, no interest for one year. You know, you can pay this TV, you know, on a monthly basis with zero interest if you sign up now. So, you know, young me was like, oh, tuwang-tuwa. 
So I signed up without even asking anything. Stupid. Alam mo kung bakit? I found out later on that there was a, a $600 or a $700 uh, sign-up fee, okay, before they grant you that promotion. So, ano yung $600 fee na yun? That would have been the interest that they would have charged you. Okay? They just worked it in. Pero 20-year-old me did not know that because I was stupid. So I learned from that. I learned to read the fine details whenever I sign a contract. Okay? So, like I said, I'm not blaming Kuya because everybody is at a different uh, level of thinking, I guess. Or level of understanding things. And maybe talagang, you know, si Kuya, he's just trustworthy. You know, he trusts everybody. Pero... Dito po sa Canada, all right? You really, really have to do your due diligence. You really, really have to, you know, think about what is best for you and what works for you and how the numbers agree with what you're about to do, regardless whether you're buying a car, you're buying a house, you're buying furniture, you're signing up for any type of contract, or even if you're buying food, okay? Natututunan po natin yun, you know, on a daily basis. That's why it kind of surprises me that after 16 years, si Kuya po, you know, he was still able to be taken advantage of by a dealership, unfortunately. Ang second hand na sasakyan, sira agad at libo-libo ang gastos na kailangan. Umabot sa di na mag-abot-abot ang kanyang bayarin. Mula sa inuupahang kwarto, tinirahan ng coaching binili. Hanggang sa ito-ito at ma-impound. At mauwi ang kababayan sa mga kalsada ng downtown Langley sa BC. O saan saan ako natutulog? Mm -hmm. Sa inabot, talaga ako sa bench, basta ako maabutan. Gapta lang pa ako ng sit up place. Paano pagkain, pangangailangan? Ay, na pwede, dumating nga rin sa punto na nangingingi rin ako, nagtatanong. Hindi ko talaga, talaga matanggap. Hindi ko talaga kaya matanggap. Pero wala akong magawa. Hindi ko po ako ina-expect yung mangyayari sa akin kasi ah, pag good job talaga nung that time. Hindi ko talaga ina-expect. Saka di, di ko makita yung sarili ko na ganito talaga. Yun ang... Hindi ko makakita sa sarili ko. Uh, parang hindi ko rin matanggap. Kaya ako pilit ko talaga bumabawal talaga. Mahap ng trabaho. Sabi po nung nanay ko dati, nung bata ako, pa nagkasawa ako, ang pag-aaway ninyo na number one is about finances. So it seems like uh, itong sitwasyon ni Kuya, ganun po nangyari. Dahil, you know, bili dito, bili doon. You know, no planning and no, no regard for the future, I guess. Uh, I guess, nagkaaway-away po sila ng pamilya niya. Yung asawa niya, di ba? Tapos, nainiwanan siya. Normal po dito sa Canada yun. <laughs> and I think, uh, normal din po yun anywhere you go in the world, di ba? Pag yung asawa, mag-asawa, nag-away dahil sa finances, you know, tapos hindi sila nakapagbate, they couldn't find a solution, most most times out of, out of ten, <laughs> it'll end up in a separation or divorce. But, marami po ako naging kaibigan, mga naging kakilala. Ganun din po ang sitwasyon. Pero hindi sila naging homeless. Dahil, you know, pinaplano po nila ang buhay nila. And they don't give up. You know, just because you encounter one problem, doesn't mean that you should completely, completely give up. Ito pong naging problema ni Kuya, hindi po, uh, it's not uncommon. Dito po sa Canada, ang dami ng de-divorce. And dami separate, unfortunately. And, you know, they live their own lives. They continue to live their own lives, di ba? Alam ko po, iba-iba tao, you know, yung pag-iisip nila iba-iba. Like, some are strong, some are weak. You know, maybe si Kuya po, you know, talagang tinamaan ng heartbreak. And di na po niya talaga makaya. You know, he basically just gave up on everything, on life. And he became homeless. Ngayon, six months na raw po. Yung mga na-encounter ko, mga kaibigan ko in the same situation, they continue working. They continue to uh, to grind it out. Dahil just because nag-separate po kayo ng asawa ninyo, dahil nagka-problema kayo, doesn't mean the world ends. You know, to some people, the world actually starts to begin. Okay? Dahil... Your responsibilities don't stop, lalo na po kung meron kayong dalawang anak, di ba? So, iisipin niyo po kung kayong sitwasyon na, na katulad nung kay Kuya, 
Hihinto na lang po ba kayo doon? Paano po yung mga anak ninyo? Kawawa naman po, di ba? So, you know, I'm not blaming Kuya. Siguro po, he has other problems. Hindi lang po yung sinabi doon sa, sa news. Dahil, I know how it is, you know, to, to feel like the whole entire world is against you. You know, siguro po, you know, there's a lot of problems na hindi nila minention or ang daming problems siguro na na face ni Kuya na hindi niya na sinabi dun sa newscaster and you know one thing happened after another and he just gave up on life so that happens po and it's really unfortunate isang financial advisor na si Eric Sena na nagbibigay gabay ngayon kay Mario marami raw talagang nakakabulag na alok sa Canada Maraming mga attractive na offer dito sa Canada, especially kung pupunta kayo sa, sa mga car dealership. Uh, merong mga deals na wala kayong babayaran kahit isang kusin. Yung mga cost po na yun ay sinasama lang sa utang ng loan. So ikinadagdag lang po doon yun. At the end of the day, lumalaki po ang monthly payment nyo. Ginagawa po yun kasi para mag magmukhang attractive talaga yung loan na wala kayong initial cash out doon sa transaction na yun at para mauwi nyo na yung kotse sa araw na, na, na yun. So guys, napakadaming option. You know, kung uh, kunyari nasa sitwasyon kayo ni Kuya Mario and uh, you bought something and it put you in a very, very uh, terrible financial situation, okay? You just don't give up, okay? Napakadami pong tulong dyan. Get a part-time job. Get a racket on the side. Communicate with your partner and, you know, figure out a way how to financially take care of this problem. Okay? Whether, you know, get more jobs, get more hours, get more overtime. Kung talagang wala nang choice, Return the car, okay? Take a loss. Pay off whatever you can pay off from the sale of the car. Kung merong matitira pa po na balance, tackle it. It's not as bad as the whole amount, you know? You will take a loss, but that's normal. Everybody takes a loss in life at one point or another. If that's not an option, go find some debt consolidation uh, company out there service out there. Napakadami po dito sa Canada nun. People that'll help you with your credit. People that'll help you with uh, with debt relief. Okay? If that doesn't work, sell some assets. If that doesn't work, go for consumer proposal. Just look that up, what that is. And if that doesn't work, talagang walang wala ng option, file for bankruptcy. You shouldn't do that unless you know, talagang walang, 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 walang option na. But yeah, file for bankruptcy. So, napakadami pong options. I'm surprised Kuya did not exercise any one of these options, right? But then again, you know, we don't know what's going on is in his head at that time. So, it's just options that I'm presenting right now. Napakadami pong options. Communication with your partner. Teamwork with your partner. And you have to be aware of all of the resources out there you know as far as financial <laughs> financial aid is concerned you know with regards to your situation napakadami po dyan. you know just because you bought a thing like a car and you can't make payments on it all of a sudden you know you give up on life and you become homeless you know i i know there's probably more factors that led to kuya mario you know becoming homeless but napakadami pong options and napakadami pong resources out there, you know, that you could do first before you give up on life. And sa akin lang po, I, like in my situation, I have children too, right? If, like say, I got divorced. <laughs> I hope that never happens, but say, say if I got divorced. However painful, however bad it is financially, I don't think I can give up because I have children, Okay. My life is dedicated to my children. You know, I will do whatever it takes and not give up as long as I can breathe. As long as nakakahinga po ako, hindi po ako titigil hanggang alam ko na masusuportahan ko yung mga anak ko. Dahil napaka-importante po sa akin noon. Nakatira ngayon sa isang shelter sa Langley si Mario, tuloy sa paghahanap ng trabaho. Nangangailangan siya ng isang bisikleta na in good working condition na 
uh, usable, uh, magandang kondisyon para magamit niya from uh, transferring, from moving para bumibili siya ng pagkain, uh, pupunta siya ng simbahan kasi nagsisimba siya uh, at uh, paikot-ikot siya para maghahanap siya ng trabaho. Gustong gusto niya bumangon pero hindi niya kaya sa sarili niya. Kailangan niya ng tulong galing sa community. Naging emosyonal ang ama nang mabanggit ang kanyang mga anak na matagal nang di nakikita. Hangan niya raw ay unahin muna ang sarili ngayon para makabangon muli. Dulahin ko matalaga sarili ko. Maging disiplina daw. You know, gatot ang pera, everything. Basta love yourself. Ang naramdaman ko naman na hindi niya ang pinababayaan. Pero di ko lang maintindihan kung bakit. So guys, currently right now, uh, Kuya Mario is located in Langley, BC, I believe. And there's a community, a Filipino community that is helping him out so he can uh, get back on his feet. So everywhere po dito sa Canada, there's going to be communities, like ethnic communities that are, that their sole purpose is to help, you know, such people na hindi pinalad. Katulad po ni Kuya Mario, you know, all you have to do is uh, find out where it is and reach out and they will be more than happy to to show you the right path or at least get you on the right path back to life, diba? So, homelessness is a real issue po talaga and it's really unfortunate, lalo na po pag nakakita ako ng kapwa Pilipino, especially in the news because typically it's very rare that you see like a kabayan, you know, uh, maging homeless. But uh, at the same time, you know, hanggang sabi nga nung lola ko, as long as you can breathe, hanggang nakakahinga ka, there's always hope. And apparently, Kuya Mario is trying his best with the help of uh, this Filipino community in BC to get back on his feet. Get a job, you know, and uh, hopefully get reunited with his family. So let's not judge because everybody po goes through hard times, okay? And I feel really bad for Kuya Mario because I've seen this throughout my life. Remember, I worked at a casino for 26 years. And dun po sa lugar na yon, dun po sa environment na yon, napakadami pong instances where itong ganitong klaseng story ah, I see it almost on a daily basis and it's unfortunate not just to patrons but to people that I work with and friends of mine okay but the uh, bottom line it all comes down to how tough are you mentally you know how dedicated are you to your goals in life you know dahil dito po sa Canada yes people fall on hard times you know but that's not the measure of being human the measure of being human is how hard you hit back okay because life kahit saan dito doesn't matter Filipinas, you know all around the world life will 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 drill you down <laughs> life will will fight you until you're you're laying on the ground okay question po how hard will you fight back so you can stand on your own two feet again and stay standing on your own two feet. Diba? So, sana naman po si Kuya Mario, like I said, he finds his way. And uh, hopefully things uh, get better from him moving forward. So guys, this is uh, Kuya Puto wishing you good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Stay hungry, stay humble. Keep your hustle strong, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Sino nga kinahal?